out to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Monday, 9.43 a.m., and the underwater pumpkin carving contest was continuing offshore near Santa Monica. Angelina's waiting for the winner to be announced with hysterical apathy. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Thad Green. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. Is that you, Kate? Uh-huh. I'm on the floor, Kate. You know, under the desk. Sure thing. You lose something, George? Yes. How'd you know? Just a guess. Um, I dropped my... Oh! Here it is. Uh, don't bump your... Head again. Pencil. I dropped it. Uh-huh. Happened to me once. Aren't you gonna ask me how my weekend was, Kate? George, why don't you ever ask me about my weekends? I ask you about your weekends. Gee, I'm sorry, Kate. Uh, how was your weekend, Kate? Terrific, thanks, George. Mine, too. Martha and I, we went to Disneyland, Kate. Did you know that Mickey Mouse is more than 50 years old? I mean, can you imagine wearing a mouse suit for 50 years? Sorry to interrupt, mathematicians. Hi, Bill. The chief said you'd be coming by. He didn't say it to me. Got to tell you, Chief said robbery division was shorthanded and needed some help. Is that about it, Bill? You got an A-plus on that one, Kate. A-plus. I got one once. It was in Metal Shop. Why, well, I, I made a planter. Uh, there's been an unusual series of holdups in the valley, and there seems to be a pattern to some of them. Patterns fall into your daily wit, crime-wise. What kind of patterns? We're not sure, but four weeks ago, six Linguini tire stores were knocked over. Knocked over? That's vandalism. Robbed. robbed. Three weeks ago, somebody robbed four sawdust burger stores. Sawdust burgers? Well, there's new fast food outlets, Kate. Martha and I eat there all the time. Sawdust burgers. Home of the big board. Over 127 sold. The crepes are great. Um, two weeks ago, they robbed five hair salons, Coiffs or Us. And last week, it was a chain of gas stations. Which gas stations? Those uh, self-serve stations. Fill up, pay up, and get out. These robberies are in addition to the regular robberies, break-ins, and purse snatchings. Are the robberies related, Bill? That's why we've come to you. We appreciate your helping us out, mathematicians. Sure thing. We'll get right on it, Bill. Mathnet, frankly. I see. No, you should call the robbery division. No problem. Wrong extension. The manager of a gas station wanted to be part of... Robbery. Gosh darn it. MathNet Monday. No, you've got the right extension. What's the problem? Uh-huh. And your location? We'll be right there. What's that? The SPCA? No, sir, you've made the right choice. We'll handle it. Yes, sir. I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George. Frankly. And you are? I am. Your name, sir? It's Boyce. First name or last name? First. Got a last? Choice. Boyce, Choice? You got it. When did the robbery occur, Mr. Choice? About 12.45. You positive? I said about. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what happened? Like I said, about 12.45, a man comes up to me at the register. What kind of car was he driving? 
See, that's when I should have started getting suspicious. He didn't have a car, and he wore a mask. What did he say? He asked me if I sold gasoline gift certificates. Gift certificates? Yeah, he said he had a friend who was a shut-in. I turned around, next thing I knew, he had a gun on me, told me to open the till and give him all the money. And? And I did. He got all of it, $3,000. Anything else? Not really. Well, there was one thing. Yes, yes sir? That's why I wondered if I should have called the SPCA, you know, the animal shelter people. Sir? He talked like a duck. Morning, Math Matters. Just going over the facts? Actually, George was just asking me about my weekend. Oh, was he? We were just chewing the fat, Kate. Don't let me interrupt. Actually, we were looking into those robberies, Kate. They're massive. In what sense? I totaled the monies that have been stolen so far. They add up to more than $100,000. How many robberies have there been? 21, Kate. Let's see, $100,000. That's an average of about $5,000 per robbery. And it looks like there is some sort of pattern. Mostly, he seems to rob one type of store and then stop and move on to another type of store. If it is one man, we don't know that. True. One person could have robbed the tire stores, and somebody else robbed the fast food places, and somebody else could have knocked over the hair salons. Debbie, can you go through these robbery reports and build up a database on your computer? Sure, but what kinds of questions do you want answered? A computer is only as good as the people who use it, Math Matters. Well, how about... who are the robbers? Be specific. Okay. Was there always one robber? Was it a male or female? Right. Was he or she always dressed the same? Did he wear a mask? Did he always flash a gap? You mean, did he show the victims a gun? Yes. Did he or she always walk away from a robbery? Is that enough to start with, Debbie? We should also find out when, where, and how the robberies were committed. I'll see what we can put together. George, I've been thinking. If this is one person who is committing these crimes, we can expect him to rob another gas station. He's hit three already. I was thinking the same thing, Kate. I checked. And there are two more fill-up, pay-up, and get-out stations in the valley that weren't robbed. Maybe we ought to stake them out. Good idea. Wait. Where are they? Uh, one is in Pasadena, Colorado, and Fair Oaks, and the other's in Chatsworth on Devonshire. We'll take Pasadena and get Sam and Steve to stake out Chatsworth. Oh, can we switch those assignments? Sure. Why? Well, if we go to Chatsworth, I can... Pick up my shirts. Sam and Steve staked out the Pasadena station and waited. When you're trying to solve a problem, any problem, patience is often a virtue. George and I went to Chatsworth to wait. We stopped for George's shirts, but they weren't ready. Sure is a lot of sitting in this job, Kate. Say that again. We've been here three hours. There's always the possibility that this station will get robbed. Right. Well, I sure hope our station gets robbed before Sam and Steve's. Martha and I want to go to the Flickers tonight. What are you going to see? A movie. Kate, look. Come on, partner, this is it. Take it easy and nobody's going to get hurt. Get your hands on that gas pump. What's the big idea? Do as he says, George, frisk him. <laughs> He's clean, Kate. What are you people doing? Trying to keep you from being robbed. Robbed? He wasn't going to rob me, were you? Oh, of course not. I just asked him if I could borrow a jack handle. 
Uh, I got a flat tire about a block from here, and I lost my jack handle. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry, sir. We made a mistake. I, uh, I understand. 11 out of 12, nap, nap, come in. Excuse us? Must be Sam and Steve. Excuse me. Monday, come in. Sam, Steve? Kate, it's Sam. Did they hit your station? Not exactly. How about yours? Nothing. Why are you calling? I just got a report on something that may interest you. What is it? A 10-4 convenience store just got robbed. That happens a lot, Sam. So what? The guy sounded like a duck. Yeah, well, you can take your jack handle and... sounded like a rhinoceros. I want this case broken. Yes, sir. Let me know. As soon as we get something, sir. The chief? Uh-huh. He wants those robberies solved. The chief is like a guy with a shirt collar that's too small. Uh-huh. Under a lot of pressure. Well, math matters. I've started a database from your questions. Let me show you what I've got so far. Are we in for a canine and equine presentation? Dog and pony show. Well, take a look at these printouts. Most of the 21 robberies, 22 including the 10-4 store yesterday, were done between 12.30 and 1, and only one robbery per day. Get that information from the robbery reports, Debbie? Mm-hmm. It was all there. Just had to organize it. You said most of them. What about the other robberies? They fall into a time pattern, too. 22 robberies. Fifteen were done between 12.30 and 1. Four were done between 4.30 and 5 p.m. And the other three were at night, between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. I don't know what that information means, Debbie. Kate, I'm just looking for patterns. If you want specific information, you have to ask me specific questions. I thought your computer was all-knowing, Debbie. George, I told you in yesterday's episode, a computer is only as good as the people who use it. Just kidding, Debbie. She's some crackers. I do know that the robberies committed between 12.30 and 1 were all done during the week, Monday through Friday. What about the other four committed between 4.30 and 5? All on Saturday. The other three were at different times. Do you have any idea whether it was one person or more than one? Most of the victims said it was a man who robbed them. They also said the man was wearing a sport coat, slacks and a mask same coat and slacks no but they had one thing in common polyester 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 you know kate material that my good clothes are made out of debbie did the victims talk about the robber's voice as a matter of fact some did 16 said it sounded strange like a duck some said duck. Some said it sounded like a chicken. Some said a turkey. But most said duck. What about the other six? They didn't mention anything about the voice. Nothing at all? It wasn't in the report, so I called them. And they said? They didn't mention anything about the voice because no one asked them about the voice. What? Like I said, if you want an answer to a question, the only way to be sure to get that answer is to ask the question. You're right, Debbie. But what did the six say when you asked the question about the voice? Three said it sounded like a duck. Hmm. Uh-huh. I see. Three said it was a normal voice. So, let's play What Do We Know. OK. Let's take a look at Debbie's printouts. We know that there have been 22 robberies. We know 15 were committed between 12.30 and 1, Monday through Friday. And four 
were committed on Saturdays between 4.30 and 5. And three were committed at night. And I just thought of something. What? What? The managers of the three stores that were robbed at night are the three who said the robber talked in a normal voice. You mean somebody else could have robbed those stores? Let's concentrate on the other subset. We know that those 19 robberies were done by someone wearing fashions like George's and who talks like a duck. Right. Let's look for a few more common denominators. Common denominator theory is a good one, Debbie. What do a tire company, hair salons, fast food chain, gas stations, and convenience stores share? Not much right off the top. Debbie, maybe you can add some information about those companies to your database. What questions? Maybe they're owned by the same big company. Or maybe they use common suppliers. You know, cleaning services, insurance companies, gardeners, advertising. Or maybe they all use the same office supplies or accountants or, or lawyers. Now I've got something to work with. I'll get right on it. Take a look at these, Kate. Locations of the robberies? Yes. Plus other locations. I don't follow you. Something I was thinking about last night while Martha and I were at the Bel Air. The Bel Air Hotel? Uh-huh. We stopped in for a late repast after the theater. Oh, what'd you see? A play. Look, Kate, the blue dots with the X's are where the six Linguini tire stores were robbed. Uh-huh. But look at these blue dots. These are other Linguini tire stores. How come they weren't robbed? What do you mean? Well, they're in the valley. Why these and not those? I don't know. These are the fast food stores that were held up. Here are about 10 more that weren't. I think the same pattern may hold true with the hair salons, too. You keep plotting, George. I want to see a man about a duck. Right. While George checked for similarities in the robberies and Debbie compiled lists of commonalities, I continued to wonder who might talk like a duck. I decided it might be what is called a voice actor, the people who make voices for cartoon shows. I paid a visit to an actor's union in Hollywood. Oh, welcome to GAG. May I be of service? Aren't they ahead of me? Yes, but they're actors. What can I do for you? I'm Kate Monday. MathNet. I'm a mathematician. Well, we haven't had much call for a mathematician since Adam Up went off the air. <laughs> I'm not here about a job. I wonder, could you tell me how many actors Gag represents? Yes, Gag represents more than 113,000. I didn't realize there were 113,000 actors in this town. There aren't. <laughs> this may sound like a strange question, but is there some way you could consult your computer or your files or something? Certainly. Wait, I haven't asked you about the information yet. Of course. <laughs> How busy of me. <laughs> How many of the 113,000 actors you represent can do the voice of a duck? I don't need a computer for that. 113,000. And three. <laughs> Well, thank you. Break some legs. Okay. Thank you. Any suspects? 113,000. How about you? All these companies have one more thing in common. Their employees all wear uniforms, and they're all from the same uniform service. Stay pressed unis. I'll call them. Wouldn't the probability of all those companies taking from the same service be very low? Maybe the drivers. Hello, sir. Kate Monday, MathNet. My size? I'm an eight, but no, you don't understand. I don't want to rent a uniform. I have one. 
I'm placing a call to your service with regards to some recent robberies. In talking with the State Press Uni Company, I learned that the probability of all the companies using the same service was very high. It was one. In other words, it was the only uniform company that serviced the valley. No help, Debbie. Did you find out anything else? Uh-huh. They all use the same vendor service. You know, the coffee truck that furnishes coffee breaks? That might give us something. Not really. It's the same man who's had the same route servicing the same companies for over five years. If he were the culprit, everyone would recognize him. Right. I have one more call to make about another possibility. They all checked out, Kate. Every one of these chains had stores in the valley that weren't robbed. Let's figure out what this could mean, George. Thank you. At last, we may really have something, math folks. What, Debbie? Take a look at this printout. What is it? These are some common denominators of our robbed stores. Hmm, I see. George, look. They all use the same uniform company. Right, but that doesn't help. Stay Press is the only uniform company that services the Valley. They use a variety of cleaners. Right, and they do use the same coffee service, but they all know the driver. Let's look at where they advertise. They all advertise in newspapers. Yes, but different newspapers. Times, Chronicle. Look at their radio advertising. They all advertise on radio. True, but they all advertise on one station. K. Yuck. Interesting. That's what I thought. So I got a copy of K. Yuck's program schedule. Look at this. This is K. Yuck's Monday through Friday lineup. And this is Saturdays. They seem to advertise all over the schedule. But look at this. Every one of them advertises on one show, the Vile Dupe show. My golly, you're right, Debbie. They advertise on Vile Dupe during the week and on Saturdays, too. Yes. And here's something else I found, Math Matters. What? I just talked to the manager of the station and learned something very interesting. I discovered every one of those companies canceled their advertising just before they were robbed. George and I decided to pay a visit to the radio station, a small 250-watt plant in Burbank. Wild Duke was an acerbic talk show host who insulted his audience most of the time, but for some reason seemed to be quite popular. You ever heard him? Wild Duke, I mean? Uh-uh, just about him. He's a pistol. He's always yelling at his callers, calling them dopey nincompoops, hanging up on them. Yes, sir, a real pistol. You like him, eh, George? Can't stand him. Why do you listen to him? I can't help it. My right side neighbor, Mr. Beasley, listens to him all the time and leaves his windows open. Mr. Dupe was on the air, and were instructed to wait for him in the hallway. You what? Well, that's the most asinine thing these radio ears have ever heard. You're obviously a commie pinko fellow traveler, and your so-called friends that do the world a service if they put hamburger in your socks and lock you up in a kennel with a Siamese cat. Back to more calls in a moment. Good afternoon, Mr. Dupe. I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George. Frankly. Math net, huh? You look like a real estate salesman. 
Yes, sir, I wonder if we could ask you a few questions. Sure. I'm in a commercial break now. What do you want? We noticed a number of your sponsors have quit lately. Worms. They're a bunch of worms. Yes, but something strange has happened to all of them since they quit your show, Mr. Dupe. Oh, their sales fall way off? No, sir. They were robbed. Good. It couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of yellow-bellied wastrels. You don't know why they stopped sponsoring your program, do you, Mr. Dupe? I know what the gutless traders told me. What? That I was too controversial, the little babies. We think a man with your attitude might want to get back at those sponsors. It's ridiculous. I don't need those fleas. I'm doing just fine. We don't think so, Mr. Dupe. Well, then you don't think. We think you had reason to rob those stores, Mr. Dupe. Impossible. I was on the air when those places were robbed. We didn't say what time the robberies occurred, Mr. Dupe. I read it in the papers. It was never printed in the papers, Mr. Dupe. Listen, nosebleed, I heard about it somewhere. When were the robberies? Most were between 12.30 and 1 p.m. I'm on the air between 12 and 4 every day. Some of the robberies were on Saturdays, Mr. Dupe. What time? Between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Saturdays, I'm on the air from 4 to 8 p.m. Look, feather brains, you got the wrong men. Now, why don't you float out of here? Thank you for your time, Mr. Dupe. <laughs> What's on your so-called mind, noodle noggin? Okay. Look at this. That's our coverage map. Coverage map? The shaded area is where our station can be heard clearly. Okay. Looks a lot like my map. I can give you a copy of it if you like. Our sales staff uses it to sell advertisers. Thank you. Oh, by the way, has Mr. Duke been on the air during his regular time period? I beg your pardon? I mean, has been on vacation or taken a leave of absence during the last month or so? Oh, no, he's been here all the time. He takes his vacation at the same time every year and goes to the same place. When and where is that? The last two weeks of December, he goes on a religious retreat. the people in graphics make up KX coverage area on this overlay. Now look, all but three of the robberies fall within that coverage area. And those three don't follow the time or voice pattern. Dupe has got to be our man. I think so too, George. But he's got an ironclad alibi. I got the background on file, Dupe, you asked for math matters. What did you find, Debbie? He used to be a pretty big star in radio. He had a network call-in show and made a lot of money in the 1950s. How did he end up on a little station in the San Fernando Valley? He's always been controversial. One day he was on the air with a member of the DAR and he called George Washington a communist. Got fired? Mm-hmm. Then he kicked around local radio going to smaller and smaller stations. Nobody wanted to take a chance on him even though he always got big audiences. He's quite a story. And get this, know what he did in the late 1940s? Uh-uh. He had a children's radio show. A children's show? My goodness. Mm-hmm. It was in Schenectady. And it was called Dopey Duck and the Lake Patrol. He did a duck voice? Yep. And if it sounds like a duck? And it looks like a duck. It's got to be our duck. Kate, here's something we missed. You know, didn't catch? Look, there's one 10 4 store in the advertising area that hasn't been robbed. When Bile goes for it, we'll be there to nab him. Come on, George, you don't think Bile Duke would rob that store now? Why not? He knows we're watching him, George. He wouldn't try anything that foolish. Kate, if he's our man, and we're sure he is, he thinks he's got a foolproof way of committing these robberies. Our problem is, he's right. That's exactly what I mean. Bile Dupe has an ego a mile high, a perfect alibi, and an M.O. that works. He'll surely try to knock this one over. I don't know, George. 
The chief wants to know if you're getting anywhere in the valley robberies, math netters. We're getting closer, Bill. Good. That's what I just told the 6 o'clock evening news. I said we'll have a report for you in a few days. Is my watch slow? I beg pardon? How did you give a news report for the evening news when it's 9.48 a.m.? I taped it. They'll play it later. Let me know if I can help. We will. He, he taped, taped it. it. Of course. Bob put a tape on his radio show and then robbed the stores. Why not? Why not? He does a live phone-in show. What do you mean? If he's getting live phone calls. How does he put a tape in? Well, he... He... Oh, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it. So? What do we do? I'm going to call our audio lab. And you call the manager of the 10th floor store, which hasn't been robbed. While George put a call through to the audio lab, I talked with the 10th floor manager and told him we thought his store might be next. He agreed to help us out and gave us his complete cooperation. Well, partner? Let's roll. I guess so. Time to tune into your favorite show and mine, George. From near the heart to the left of the kidney, smack dab in the liver of the valley, it's live, 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 the vile Duke show. And here he is, the controversial, the outrageous, the irrepressible Vile Duke. I'm Vile Duke, and you're a lop-eared meatball. What's on your mind, caller? I left my heart in San Francisco. That was very careless of you. So what? You expect me to go up there and poke around a fisherman's wharf with a... Hey, I help you? Soybeans, I hope so. I'm looking for a 1937 Packard. A 1937 Packard? A car? All right, who are you and what do you want? This is a convenience store, sir. I know that. Don't you have cars? Of course not. Oh. Then I'll have a Clark bar. I suggest unrequited love is a bore. Leave well enough alone. Go ahead, you valley zany. What's your subject? I'm concerned about animals' rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, you bleeding heart. I think animals should be allowed to drive cars, especially small dogs. Uh-huh. Uh, would you like to tell me why, you dim bulb? George, think we need any more boxes of instant Brussels sprouts? Kate, listen. Well, there are lots of small dogs, and it would make it easier for them to, you know, cross the streets. What is it? Bile well, is going to say, I've heard of dog lovers, but you're ridiculous. I've heard of dog lovers, but you're ridiculous. I don't get it. I heard that same call through Mr. Beasley's open window about a year ago. Then you're right. Yep. He records all his shows, and he replays an old tape, sneaks out of his station, and says, Don't shoot, sir. Take the money. We interrupt the Bile Dupe show for this special announcement. Bile Dupe, popular talk show Loudmouth, is at this very moment robbing a 10-4 convenience store at the corner of Tahunga and Moore Park. At this very moment, he is saying, <laughs> Now he's waving his gun and saying, <laughs> out thinking of an escape he is confronted by two ever vigilant lapd officers i've been had that's the truth never thought i'd be caught by a couple of mathematicians never underestimate the power of logical thinking vile but there is one thing yeah why did you talk like a duck when you robbed your sponsors my voice is so distinctive so wonderful i was afraid i'd be recognized well it worked for a while. 
my fine feathered friend. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Duke was convicted of a 211 armed robbery and holding up a convenience store at an inconvenient time. He has been locked away in a state penitentiary where, when last heard, he was a disc jockey on the local prison radio station, KJAIL. KJL serving the captive audience for seven to ten years. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York.